Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, wherever you may be in the world right now. This is Hellblazer Biz, and I am your host, as always, Chris Gordon. Wow, it's been a while since I've said that, and it feels good to be back, bringing you candid and friendly interviews and conversations with the stars. Today's guest is, of course, no exception, and exciting for me as well as a country music fan. Um, she is a UK country music artist, published on Spotify, and we're going to get an exclusive listen to her new as yet unreleased track, which is an exceptional cover of Bonnie Tyler's Need a Hero. So without further ado, I bring you the fantastic voice of Rhiannon Page. Everyone, I am here with Rhiannon Page, a UK country music artist. So, hey, Rhiannon, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. Pleasure. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, yeah, I've been watching. I say I've been following you on TikTok. I saw, I think, a TikTok video, and it was just like the the, the voice just blew me away. So I was oh. like, oh, I've got to follow her. <laughs> <laughs> it's so mad who you meet on TikTok. Like I've met so many people through TikTok, and like, luck, like, well, not luckily, but like, they've all been from the UK, so it's all been like possible to like meet people yeah. and do stuff like that which is really cool so that's fantastic and so i've seen a few of the tracks going on there and i've obviously went onto spotify to start mm. listening to it I, I was i was literally i love country music yeah um much to my family's hatred <laughs> <laughs> because they, they don't like it but i do i think it's great it's to me country music has got the um i don't think there's just a start it's one i can actually understand the lyrics and the lyrics are meaningful whereas yeah you know, I'm I'm what forty. I am old. I mean, I've had got the glasses came last year about three couple of months ago. I was like, fine. <laughs> then one day it was like, oh, I can't read my phone. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you get to that age, but yeah, I actually love it. I think the lyrics are really meaningful. They're powerful, um, and some of the the artists out there, like yourself, you have such powerful voices, oh. and you, the, the messages that you you know you can portray with the songs are brilliant. Compared to, I'm not going to go into the lyrics of some some of them which i've heard recently <laughs> but yeah. you know it's it's just really great and so it's, it's a it was especially it's a joy to find all the uk ones as well like yourself mm. and trying to break into that sort of area <laughs> yeah well it's nice to like have people that enjoy country music because like i say it's kind of like one of those very things but like i feel like a lot of people don't realize when they're listening to music that it's actually quite like country inspired and then mm. like, i'd say like my partner for one when um we first started going out and stuff um would listen to music and i was like do you realize like this is actually country and just like oblivious to it and so like it's just so interesting to see like the different areas of country music as well oh yeah definitely i think to be fair i never used to like it <clears throat> um, my dad always hated it my late father <laughs> and it was about this what was it um i can't even remember kenny rogers mm-hmm um, and I'm not going to repeat what you used to say about Kenny Rogers, uh, but yeah, uh, that's, but that's very old. Like, that's not, you know, that, but again, it's like you just said, there's so many different different versions of it because yeah, that's yeah. what I think a lot of people associate with country still. It's the old from the yeah. 60s, 70s, that Kenny Rogers style, you know, and, mm. and, and good old Dolly Parton, bless her soul. She's yeah. still going strong. strong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I think I was about 15 years ago. It was, I, I think it was Flora excuse me i can't speak florida georgia line mm. they're the ones who got me back into it with cruise oh nice which yeah. is one of my all-time you know and and, that, and i started listening to obviously more of it. i was thinking that's when i started thinking actually this is it's starting to get you know this is pretty decent yeah. <laughs> um and then you've got like taylor swift who people wouldn't understand it wouldn't don't realize is a country you know she's also yeah, a country yeah. star too the biggest artist like in the world now like um... i know yeah <laughs> It's and she's crazy, going back more country like she left it a little bit and now she's kind of edging towards it again <laughs> yeah definitely so what kind of got you into music in the first place and, so and what inspired uh, you to make this music so well i was born like 70 percent lost hearing in both my ears um okay. so for like eight years eight or nine years i couldn't really hear all that well um and then when i regained my hearing like my dad is very much into music, like so heavily into music. And it kind of like started off with like rock music. Um, and he still massively listens to like rock music and stuff. But um, it kind of like swayed into like Southern southern rock, which kind of like opened up my ears to like country music. And I found different artists like First Aid Kit. 
Um, I think they were the one of like the first kind of country-esque people that I came across. Um, and I just like fell in love with it. Um, and like you say, like it's so relatable, like it is like three chords of the truth and you can just put your, your own like spin on it and there's kind of no, um, what's the word? No, like rules with it. You can kind of go where you want with it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the standing jokes, isn't it? Cause it's always a true story. It's like, yeah, because the country song's always, mm. yeah, my wife ran off with the dog, the cat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think with AI now as well, you can turn around and say your car's going to run off with you as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but it's, it's that's the essence of it, and that's I think that's what draws me to it because I, I love stories, I love storytelling, and mm. country tells stories through song, mm -hmm. um, much you know, and it is it's just so powerful. And when you get certain artists, when those stories then continue through the songs that they, you know, the various songs that they do sing and. Yeah. one after the other you know and it, it's just mm -hmm. it's just really great to to see it um so what's your creative process like when you're obviously I was, I was, there's was a question of describe the music you create but we've kind of talked about that for 10 minutes yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. so what what's your creative process like when you're when you're writing so, to be fair like i actually think that songwriting it's not something that comes like super easy like i know that some people will write a song like every single day and like, I'm super jealous of those people that can do that. <laughs> I'm not one of those people. Um, and it kind of comes to me when the time's right. And I've had to like learn to do that. And like very much like, especially when I was living at home with my parents, they were very much like, you need to go write a song. And I'm like, but it just doesn't like, I need the time to come to me. Um, but when I've got it, like it tends to be, like people say, oh, they write the chords before they write the lyrics. They write the lyrics before they write the chords. Mine is very much like it happens at the same time. Like, mm -hmm. if I've got a line, I kind of need to find those chords in order to understand where I'm going with the song sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, like, also, I, I, not so much now, but I used to very much read a lot of, like, poems or, like, quotes. Quotes was definitely my thing, mm -hmm. which I'd, right. like, read and get, like, inspiration from quotes and stuff. Um, especially, like, when I was, like, sad, I would always go to, like, quotes and stuff as i'm sure like a lot of people do but then that kind of like mm -hmm. inspired me then sort of thing but, yeah all right fantastic fantastic it's, so you play the guitar as well don't you yeah yeah so you're, 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 you're actually you know you're not just the sing the song it's sing, songer this is what a word that is a song, <laughs> it's the singer so i was gonna say songstress songstress then yes. <laughs> obviously you write your own music as well as the songs yeah. themselves which is so that's you know it's a, that's a really great talent and I guess it must be hard. I mean, I used to play the trumpet, but I can't compose anything. Uh, and I write yeah. poetry as well, but I can't compose any music to it, which would be fun maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's really cool. So it, with obviously, you know, you're, you're coming out, you're starting out in the UK here. Where, where would you like to see yourself go from from where you are? Because obviously you tour in the UK at the moment. And you've, you've toured it. You know, you do tours and stuff in the UK. Where would you like to go? Nashville, um, most likely, I guess. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I'm going to say the obvious, like, Nashville. Um, I just think as soon as you can get music, like, over to America, it really, mm -hmm. like, to expand yourself. Um, so, yeah, that would definitely be the one. But to be fair, I mean, in regards to, like, touring, like, I've done, I play lots of different places. I've done a lot of, like, different festivals and stuff. But to be fair, like, touring-wise, I would actually like to put on my own tour. Like, I've drawn someone else's tour and stuff. But, like, my goal definitely for like the next couple of years is to book my own tour um take like my band with me and sell out different like places and stuff um but it's tough like going having the confidence to be like okay right I'm just gonna do a tour because it could like completely flop or it might not like but you just gotta take like you just gotta take it <laughs> as it <clears throat> Cool. That sounds great. Yeah, I mean, you know, let's it's, say it's, it's one of those because I'm sure you will go far. I think I put that on my intro before you heard it. it was a, like, you know, listening to your voice and stuff. I mean, I put you up there with the, the power in your voice, the likes of Carrie Underwood and, oh. and people like that. Because you know, that's the, yeah. the it just sends shivers down it, especially when you hit those really powerful notes. Which you know, it's just like whoa. <laughs> yeah, it just it really did. It took me back. I was like, wow, that's that's cracking. So I'm sure you're really going to go far. And um, oh, you. you know, when you you will get get over to the states and stuff. But it's like it's a long, it's a hard slog. 
isn't it? To, yeah. to like you say, to, to get into those places. And... You just got to catch like your lucky break. Like it's sometimes it is. Like, I I gig full time for a living, so I do do like cover gigs and yeah, pushing my original stuff alongside it. But I think sometimes like if you aren't like there's a lot of people that won't do like cover gigs and stuff. But I always think like the people that I've met along the way, like you wouldn't even like believe it and stuff. So I just think if I can be at the right place, right time, and that could be doing like a cover gig it could do work in my favor so yeah oh yeah there for sure and, and speaking of that with those and speaking of the artists and stuff mm. who would you love to open a show for i mean you've done joint gigs you've done your own gigs and stuff and obviously you know you like you say you, 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 mm. you tour doing covers and stuff but who would you love to open a show for and eventually they can open yours <laughs> <laughs> so actually is like she's not like on the lights of like Taylor Swift, like massive, but mm. she's like getting super big and she's far bigger than I am. But I would love to open for a lady called Els Bailey. I don't know if you know who she is. Um, I know the name. I can't remember what song she's done, but I've heard the name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she's doing amazing. I, I like, she came into my college where like years ago now and she watched me perform. And back then, like she was kind of just working her way up and she's gotten like so much like further with it. And yeah, like I just think to be able to support someone that's like from similar sort of like background and stuff, mm -hmm. area, I just think it'd be super cool. Obviously, I, I'd love to support the likes of like Casey Musgraves or like oh, yeah. <laughs> if we're talking like UK artists, like Els Bailey's definitely up there for sure. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Oh, you mentioned Casey Musgraves, one of my favourites. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's stunning as well. So. <laughs> But her lyrics, her lyrics are hilarious. Uh, you know, she's yeah, just, she's just, they're just so brilliant. Um, I've got to say, I think my, sorry, no, I'm deviating again, but Luke, it's Luke Bryan, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's Luke Bryan. Oh God, no, it's not. It's not the one I'm thinking of. I've completely. Did they did name. a duet together? Yeah, it's uh, not him I'm thinking of though. Oh, well, never mind. It'll, it'll come back to me. Uh, it's the one who sang the uh, "Beer Will Never Break Your Heart." That's not Luke Bryan. It's our Car Luke Combs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's one of my favourites. I was going to say he's one of my favourites. One of my favourites. I can't remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> no, they've all got the same names, though. It's like... Luke, oh, yeah, yeah. They're all Luke's. Got, and... um, Morgan. Morgan Wade. Morgan Wallen. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> it, it get, can get, that's, thanks for backing me up on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It can get confusing. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. Like... People say to me, like, oh, do you know such and such, Mike? If you show me a song or a picture, then probably, yeah. But if <laughs> you're going off late, <laughs> I'm, I'm hopeless. Oh, God, yeah. No, Luke Combs did one about his dad. And he's like, when he's late, I can't remember, you, you know, it goes, I'm not going to sing it. But <laughs> I can't. Uh, I can't. I'll sing it in my car, but there's no chance. <laughs> it's yeah. talk about his dad leaving and stuff, and obviously it turns the table. My God, because obviously I lost my dad, and he, mm. even it's like 15 years ago. It's so, it's so raw. It's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's, it's about that storytelling. It hits yeah. everybody's nerves. It's uh, it's brilliant. Um, so complete opposite is what kind of what's the most useless talent you've got? Ah, <laughs> uh, if you have useless. one at all. <laughs> uh, I'm sure I have so many. I can't think. <laughs> um, oh, I feel like I have to think by and come back to you on that one. Like, yeah, no, that's fine. I did have one, and I can't remember what I uh, thought of. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely got many useless talents, though, for sure. <laughs> All right, what's the most trouble you've ever gotten into? So. That I you can actually put out there for people to hear. <laughs> I don't know if it's the most trouble, but it's a time that I remember, so we're going to go with it anyway. But um, when I was younger, I used to have a play kitchen, like a thing. All right, okay. Thing. And um, when I was younger, I used to hate roast dinners, right? Like, they mm -hmm. were something I hated. Like, I love them now, but I just hated them. Yeah. And um, I remember we got a conservatory on our family home. And um, I took my dinner out there. I was like, mm -hmm. can I take my dinner out there? And um, so I was eating it out there, but I hated it so much. Like, I put it in one of the pots, of, <laughs> like the fake pots. And then... Um, hid it in there and pretended like I'd eaten it all. And um, my parents <laughs> didn't believe that I'd actually eaten this roast dinner. 
and uh, they soon found it and they just went mental they were just like <laughs> what are you doing you're wasting food like oh gosh that. but um yeah it wasn't wasn't the finest moment but it's the one that sticks with me I'm definitely <laughs> probably been in far more trouble than that but <laughs> <laughs> oh that's fair enough I've oh, never ever not liked roast dinners really for some reason same yeah. things that I, I used to hate spag bowl. I love it now. Yeah. I cauliflower. I like cauliflower now. <laughs> I was like that with pizza. I didn't eat t- 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 pizza until I was like 14, 15. Oh, really? I, I, I couldn't, I just, the thought of it just made me feel sick. And then really? I, just couldn't, I couldn't get enough of it, which is why I've had to go on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> mine's, mu- mine, mine's mushrooms. Like, I still just can't. Ooh, I can't stand them. No. I hate it. Like, no matter how much I try them, that's it. No. Like, no thanks. I just can't. No, they, they, they're just tasteless and they're rubbery. It's just oh. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's just oh, absolutely disgusting. Uh, so, with going to us back to the music side of things again, which is why we're here. What kind of the internet itself is obviously very powerful. Like I say, like we started off, I found you on TikTok, which is obviously mm-hmm. another new app. So, so how do you feel that's impacted the music business? <laughs> so I think like it's so much harder nowadays to make anything of yourself i think that like things like tiktok like i mean i've had so many battles with it like i'm on it and then i give up because i'm just like this is going nowhere i'm going past i'm not going past like the 300 views or whatever but um the sad reality is like actually a lot of people can make it from social media so you kind of just have to bite the bullet and just keep going with it um but i think it's impacted the industry massively like i think like even things like you don't tend to get people going out scouting for people it's all like found online now so actually yeah. that thing of being seen gigging and stuff doesn't always happen i'm sure it does happen but definitely nowhere near as much as it used to um mm. it's just all so online led um which i don't think shows a true person fully i think like even myself or anyone i watch i think people are better live than they are like yeah, oh yeah, definitely. But um, but yeah, sad reality is. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing like live music, and uh, you know, it's it's a shame. I think that's a whole society in general. It just seems to have changed a lot. Mm. Um, that you know, probably COVID hasn't helped, has it? If it's, <laughs> you know, it's uh, that it's changed a lot of things. But I, you know, I would recommend anyone to just go out and see live music, and mm. and uh, like I say. I think it's just the ease of access for the internet. Like I say, if agents are scouting and stuff, they don't have to travel. They can just, you know, they just pick someone's name online. But mm-hmm. it doesn't give the right atmosphere. It's 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 not the same. You can watch a concert online, which is great. But it just, yeah, yeah. It, there's no no feeling than actually being in that crowd and feeling the atmosphere, feeling the buzz yeah. from the artist on stage and, and, and then buzzing back off the crowd. And, you know, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. But I used to do acting on theatre and it, it was, it was the feedback you get really makes you think, oh, this is great and carry yeah. on. And on. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> We've touched on it a little bit. So what other kind of musicians do you admire? We've obviously got from the UK or from the US side of things. Yeah. So a completely different side of things, but I really like this, but, um like pink really inspires me i've seen her live like i just think she's amazing um i think she's great like say casey graves um so morgan wade is another one i think is amazing um Mm -hmm. i love chris stapleton i remember stumbling across (laughs) chris stapleton's song cold and i was who is this person like and then obviously where everyone like fell in love with like Tennessee whiskey and stuff and that's an amazing song but I just think so many mm. other songs is, like deserve more recognition than they get I think um yeah he's got a fantastic voice <laughs> yeah, so good yeah all right cool fantastic thank you um let's just have a look here now see where we can go because what's your favorite song to perform because obviously you do you do covers as well as your mm. own songs as well so which is your favorite to do oh good question um I do love Belting Out a Bit of Shallow from A Star Is Born. I do love that song. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> likes stopping their tracks because they're like, is she going to make it? Is she not? Like, a big bit. Um, yeah. I also love, like, I love Four Non Blondes, What's Up. That's just never gets old with me. I love singing it. I love proper 
like screaming it out, getting the grittiness out. Um, Casey Musgrave's Follow Your Arrow is, oh, I don't I always, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't always play it because it depends on the crowd. But even if yeah. you don't know the song, they always tend to like enjoy it because it is, I just don't know how you can't enjoy it. It's so, so <laughs> um, it's so light and fluffy, that song. <laughs> yeah. And then also like um, Holding Out of a Hero, the one that I'm really seeing at the end of this month. Um, Fantastic. It's a fun one. And that was a great plug because we've actually got it here. We can actually listen yeah. to a little bit of it. <laughs> so uh, hopefully, let's see if this works. So we'll, uh, everyone who's watching and listening now, this is obviously Rianne Page's new cover, which is coming out, coming out at the end of the month, which is Holding Out for a Hero. Yeah. Play some of it for you. It's a fantastic track. It really is. Thank you. Where have all the good men gone and where are all the gods? Where? The streetwise Hercules to fight the rising odds. Isn't there a white knight upon a fiery steed? Late at night, I toss and I turn and I dream of what I need. I need a Pause it there. That's, that's, that's a little bit of the uh, holding out for a hero, which is a uh, fantastic, fantastic yeah. cover of Bonnie Tyler. Uh, and again, it's the, the music with the, the the sound coming out. So I've listened to the whole track, obviously, and everyone can get that at the end of the month. Um, I'm not gonna, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna. They can have a sneak preview on this, but it's <laughs> and that was done by popular demand, wasn't it? Because I believe you actually put a bit of that up, and the comment, yeah. the feedback you had was just astounding. I saw, I was watching, and everyone wanting so please, please release it. Yeah, no, I like uploaded it. Did really well on TikTok. Well, I know some people have had like millions of views, but like to me, it did really well. Um, and then I put it on YouTube as well. I like didn't even put that it, I put it on YouTube and well, 50,000 people there enough found it. So, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. Fantastic. Like, they're, they're fantastic. recording a whole version. I never thought I'd release a cover, but um, there you go. Yeah, fifty thousand. Oh, that's I'm, I'm envious. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's a, that's a, that's a absolutely fantastic. And I, I mean, but they get, it's the voice. I think cause people obviously it comes up in the algorithms, mm. and then all you've got to do, you've just got to listen to the first few seconds as you're scrolling, like and you're just like, whoa, hang on a minute, that's something different. <laughs> you know, and yeah, you get the hook drawn right in. It's it's, yeah. it's really really good. <laughs> so what's the um, what's the best advice you've been given? In regards to like my own stuff, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, well, yeah, it's your own stuff. How to progress? What you know? Um, I mean, in regards to like my own music journey, rather than so, I've been given like two bits of advice. I say I'll say both of them. Um, so in regards to when I'm gigging full time and stuff, I always remember when I was in Brighton, I used to play a place called Molly Malone's, and the lady that put on all the music she watched me and she said like oh you're like really great but I wouldn't put you on like a Friday and Saturday they did live music every day of the week mm -hmm. um just because like it needs to be like banger after banger like super upbeat and you know getting the crowds going and, and at the time yeah. I'd only really just left uni and I think most people do they start out and they have kind of like the slower songs and stuff and um even though like it hurt it like mm. knocked up inside of me to go like oh my god like I need to do this and I think yeah. if you hadn't have said that I wouldn't have got all of this material now which allows me to go and do kind of whatever gig I want because mm -hmm. I have that variation of downbeat like more chilled and like super party like um so that was definitely like a massive bit of advice like from terms of my working career but in terms of like my own stuff I think just like people saying like never give up and it is true like there's so many yeah. times I at least have it like once a month where I get really down mm -hmm. and oh like I can't do this like it's so demoralizing but the thing is you just can't ever give up I was watching a video today actually um of a country artist in America and he won um the award and he was just saying like he's 39 and like it's just proof that you can make it at like kind of yeah. any age and it is just the fact of don't ever give up 
and as much as you want to put yourself down like you need to suppress those feelings and just keep going with it because if you have that mentality like you are going to make something even if it's not like massive you're still going to make it and like even now like I'm doing music full time so to me like part of me has made it sort of yeah do you know what I mean so doing what you love aren't you mm. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's a really, really excellent piece of advice. It really is. Um, and I know the feeling well uh, from mm. doing what I do. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, I never give up. It's uh, I've just written to Lawrence Fishburne and Keanu Reeves, his publicist <laughs> this week, for example. I've got a flat nose, but <laughs> you've got to aim high. Well, you, it is so true, though. Like, there's so many times when I think, like, like even, so, for example, I was talking about Els Bailey. Um, yeah like there's something going on in my area for a support sort of like mcfly scout for girls so for Spexer and stuff mm -hmm. and local people to audition so like i put it forward and i know that els baby's on the audition panel um and i didn't know whether like she just sees them first or like it goes through the first stages then they pass them on to them um yeah and i was like i'm just gonna message her saying like oh like i'm auditioning for it and i hope to like get to see you soon and and any other messages I've sent her, like, she's never replied, but she did reply to this one. And she was like, oh, like, really looking forward to, like, hearing you and stuff. And you just got to kind of put yourself out there, haven't you? Sometimes you think, oh, God, like, I'm being so, so annoying. But if you don't, if you don't ask, you don't get with things, like. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Not like, I mean... it, but as in, like, if you don't do things, you don't, you just don't know, do you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, it's, you've just got to you really, you know, carry on and push and don't give up because it's like it, it's, the entertainment industry is cutthroat. <laughs> yeah, it it's really, it really it really is. and and like I say, like I I spend so much time being like, oh, like do I just give up and stuff or whatever? But and then I th suddenly think I'm like, I am doing what I love, and like if it is for whatever reason that I don't manage to make it to where I want to be, then at least I know that I did all my life like trying to get there rather than just like giving mm -hmm. up. Um, and like in in uni, so I went to drama school for uni. And yeah. I had the worst time, like I hated it so much. All right, okay. And um my the last like thing that my principal said to me was like, You're never gonna make it if you are the way you are because I because in drama, like they're all shaped to be very I don't know, like follow exactly what they say, like and not not that like I'm a naughty person, but like as in I am not afraid to speak up for myself. Like mm -hmm. if something's right, I'm gonna speak yeah. about it because I don't agree. Whereas everyone else is too afraid and will just like <laughs> shut off and stuff. And for that, they were just like, you're too opinionated. And I'm like, no, I'm too opinionated for this industry. Agreed. Like, <laughs> if that's what you, like, you, yeah. want, you want a perfect, like, princess that's going to, like, follow your lead. Like, I'm not that person. Like, that doesn't mean that I'm, like, too opinionated. It just means that I'm willing to stand up for myself, whereas no one else is. Like, yeah, different. exactly. And yeah. so, like, big I've difference. Always, yeah. And I've always thought to myself, like, I'm going to, like, I'm not going to give up. Like, I will prove you all wrong. And you'll always mm. be in the end forever, like, putting me down. Like, do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, good for you. I know with acting, that's what the people I speak to, because a lot of them are independent actors. And you're right, it's there. They feel there is a f fear, I think, in that kind mm. of industry. Like, you can't speak up because you yeah, don't yeah. cancel you from roles and stuff like that. It's happened to some Hollywood people, hasn't it? What the name forgets me again. Um, but. She was a great actress. She was in Transformers years ago and she spoke up about stuff and they blacklisted her from yeah. Hollywood just for just for speaking out and defending herself over. She's mm -hmm. starting to get roles again now because they've heard it. But it's especially for women, I think, as well. It, you know, it's mm -hmm. really cutthroat. It's, um, yeah. But those things with Me Too and stuff, it, that's changing. Mm. Um, I've asked but, what's yeah. good about music because you can be yourself. Like, there is no rules. Like, obviously, there are, like, when you get in massive and stuff, but really, there's no rules to it. You can yeah. be so. That's really really cool. That's great. See, made it because obviously, you know, you're out there doing your gigs and stuff. See, so <laughs> uh, that's fun. That's brilliant. Have you, have you got any upcoming shows at all? I, I know you have. So yeah, just please sing them. <laughs> no, no, I do. Um, the one I'm like really really looking forward to is um, I'm doing a show in London on the third of March, which I've actually never gigged in London. Um, so I'm super excited for it. Um, and it's a guy. It has a company called Ron's Honky Tonk. Um, he's <laughs> setting it up. Um, we've got a guy called Nathan Leeser. I believe that's how you pronounce it. He's coming over from America. 
and mm-hmm. myself and a guy called Finn Peterson who I met on TikTok, you might have seen him, um, were like supporting him and stuff and super, super excited for it. Um, should be a lot of fun. Fantastic, fantastic. That's really, really good. And before I just stop recording, is there anything you'd like to say to the fans who are watching and listening? Your fans who are watching and listening, because they're <laughs> you've got they're out there. There are lots of them out there. <laughs> no, just like thank you so much for everyone's like continued support and for the people that like never give up on me and just the kind words that people say. Like even like like I say like when like, I'm feeling down, like people were just saying all the kind things that they do it just means so much and it kind of brings you back to reality and keeps me on like fighting so I really really appreciate all the support and especially everyone's support on this like release that's coming out on the 26th like everyone's so excited and I'm just so excited to be able to give it to everyone finally um so yeah just like thank you so much for everything everyone does cool and thank you